Ek. Hello. Okay, we're back. Cool. Sorry, I did in fact forget to upload. <clears throat> I knew I had the videos made in my drafts. I just couldn't remember if I posted them, so I had to go back and check. And I in fact did, did not, so I had to go upload. I had three videos I had to put up. <sighs> Ryan, Ryan Rockstar, thank you for the sub, my friend. I appreciate it. Not exactly happy up. Sick, but it doesn't. Ooh, Sirium, I'm sorry. Sorry you're sick, big dog. <sighs> Cosplayer Kitty. Cosplayer Kitty, have you been here before? I remember. I, tr I usually remember everybody's usernames pretty well. I don't think I've seen yours before. Are you new? Are you new around here? I've seen a lot of people getting sick, to be honest. School tomorrow. All right. Alzora, that's fine. I've said it once. I'll say it again. I'll say it a million more times. Um, if you guys have responsibilities, those responsibilities absolutely take precedence over this. Don't get me wrong. I love coming here. I love that you guys enjoy watching me read, interacting with me. I appreciate the love. I appreciate the support. But responsibilities first, I will never come between y'all and what is truly important. And yeah, I've been... Cosplayer... I have not seen your username, Cosplayer Kitty. I have not. And it's so much worse than yours. Well, Ryan, we're back. We're back, we're back, we're back. I don't know how consistent we're going to be back because my work schedule is still nuts and I have... Uh, uh, it's a long story. Life is going to be, life has been crazy and it's only going to get more crazy the next few weeks. So I was able, uh, this was my day, first day off in almost a week. I was able to wedge this in there, but, uh, it's, mm, it's been a rough, rough little stint in terms of, uh, content. I haven't even had time to, like, edit or upload on YouTube. Although I hope and pray that I will be able to get a video up either tonight or tomorrow. So, but we're here. Love the post. I appreciate that, uh, Eli. I appreciate that. Oh, wait. That's two different people. It both popped up green. I thought it was the same person. Uh, Eli, it has been too long. And Viridian, uh, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, Isabella, welcome. Uh, just got off school. Awesome, awesome. It's always a... Dude, I remember, like, the greatest thing when I was in... Like, when I was in school and had full school days was getting off, coming home, and just, like... Just either hopping on the game or just watching whatever YouTube video, like, my favorite YouTubers just dropped. Like, it's... That fresh out of school... Just kickback period, like those uh, that hour and a half, two hours after school, just hits different for some reason. I did not get the girl's number, Alzora. I did not. I'm so, so sorry to burst y'all's bubble. Uh, your boy is not the ladies' man that y'all like to think he is. I did not get that girl's number. I did not. Shit happens. About a week because of... Damn. How happy it makes me... Dude, I told y'all, I told y'all I try my best to remember y'all's names. I'm like... Some of, like, the more outlandish, um... Usernames, I might fuck up a few times, but I do my best to remember y'all's names. I really do. I'm a dip, probably. <laughs> Bro, I work in a Costco warehouse. You do not have to tell me. Wi-Fi in there is ass. Oh, boy. 
say I'm lucky. I somehow managed to get like data through like I my data connects through the building. I don't know how because most co Costco's have that heavy duty ass warehouse roof, but yeah, Costco Wi-Fi is not great. Well, usually because there's like freaking 150 people connected to it at once trying to do stuff. Been watching exclusively on YouTube for a while. Like I said, hopefully we can be here a lot more consistently, but I have no idea. As a South African, my accent is sending. Dude, I've had people say that before. Like, d d like obviously all people have an accent depending on where they're from. But is mine really that extreme? Like, is it really that pronounced? Is it like a thing? <sighs> Download Twitch just a day. I appreciate that, Nubia. I appreciate that. Yo, oh, gotcha. All right. Stretch it out real quick. Uh, Muffins. So I live in Maryland. I don't know if like Marylanders have a certain kind of accent, but like, for those of y'all that aren't from the states or maybe just aren't in like the DMV East Coast area, DMV being Delaware, Maryland, Virginia, um, like Maryland is. Since the Civil War, Maryland has been like the border state for the north and south of the United States. We are, cut like, smack dab in the middle, like, in the American Civil War, where it was north versus south, Maryland was, like, the middle. Like, we were smack dab there. Like, when they say, like, in the American Civil War, like, brothers and were fighting fathers, brothers were fighting brothers, like, Maryland, that was a huge thing. Because you had some Marylanders that were north, some Maryland, Marylanders that were south. Like, literally, depending on where like, where you were, like, Maryland, you could literally find yourself, like, shooting your neighbor, like, the very next day. Like, literally, like, Maryland was big with that. Just the fact that we are literally the north-south border state for the United States. And sometimes it has, has some of us picking up a very weird accent especially where i'm at because like where i'm at is a little bit of like uppity white people a little bit of like white trash white people a little bit of like city it's like like it's kind of a conjuncture point there's a lot of stuff condensed to one area it's very ethnically diverse very racially diverse very linguistically diverse very like socioeconomically diverse like it, and there's just, like, it's a very big mixing pot situation which can result in certain speech patterns or, I guess, accents that may catch other people off guard. Wait, hold on. Now I gotta scroll back and look up. It's Kira. I'm glad I could get you and your brother uh, reading them, Kira. I hope, or Kyra, whichever it is, you know. Um, I hope you guys enjoy them. I hope you both do. You and your brother both. Um, Eli, do you think Assassin's Creed is appropriate for 13? Dude, I'm, I'm not shitting you. Like, I'm going to be dead serious, Eli. I have been playing Assassin's Creed since I was about four or five years old. Like, Assassin's Creed 1 released in November. 
off the top of my head, I want to say November, like, 12th or 13th, but, like, mid-ish November 2007, my dad played it, and then I played it, um, so I was about four, maybe five when I played it, um, and I've been playing the franchise ever since, has never been a problem, plus Ubisoft, the makers of Assassin's Creed, have this great function where you can turn off graphic content. So, like, you can turn off blood, you can, like, turn off certain things, and you'll be good to make it more kid-friendly. That's why my dad allowed me to play it. He flipped the graphic um, content filter on and then just let me do my thing, and it's been an obsession ever since. So, absolutely, if you're 13 years old, you can absolutely play Assassin's Creed. Assassin's Creed is one of those games that gets, like, an M for mature rating just because of, like, alcohol references and because you can hire prostitutes and the prostitutes don't even prostitute. They literally are just used for social stealth. Like, you hire their help and they walk with you. That way you can stay hidden from guards and stuff. And then you can send them over to flirt with guards and act as a distraction. And that's all from, like, Assassin's Creed 2 up to Assassin's Creed, um, 4. No, Assassin's Creed Rogue, that you can do that. But, like, Assassin's Creed is not, not in any regards inappropriate. Like, when I have a son, when I have a daughter, if they want to play video games, I'm absolutely just putting them on Assassin's Creed as their first but that's just me. Um, ah, shit, my hair fell and poked me in the eye. Hold on. Reading, I'm gonna start reading. I just like to interact with people, Slayer. Don't worry. Hold up. Scrolling down to the bottom of chat. Give me a second. There we go. Uh, how do you do that? It's literally in your settings menu. Like, if you go to settings and then go to, like, I want to say it's either gameplay or visuals, you can literally just flip off graphic content. All right. All right, all right, all right. Let's get down to what everybody's here for. The reading, shall we? All right. I believe we left off at chapter 10. Yes, all right, we left off at chapter 10, so, oh, let's get into this, shall we? <clears throat> well, got to set up for the YouTube intro. Welcome back, fella, blah, 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 blah. here we go, we're going to mess up the intro twice before we get it right. <laughs> Welcome, fellow demigods, to another... There we go. There's the second mess up. Come on, Mason. <clears throat> Welcome back, my fellow demigods, to another reading of The Sea of Monsters. Today, we're picking back up where we left off with Chapter 10. We hitch a ride with dead confederates. Thermos! I screamed as we hurtled toward the water. What? Annabeth must have thought I'd lost my mind. She was holding onto the boat straps for dear life, her hair flying straight up like a torch. But Tyson understood. He managed to open my duffel bag and take out Hermes' magical thermos without losing his grip on it or the boat. Arrows and javelins whistled past us. I grabbed the thermos and hoped I was doing the right thing. Hang on! I am hanging on, Annabeth yelled. Tighter! I hoped my feet under the boat's inflatable bench, and as Tyson grabbed Annabeth and me by the backs of our shirts, I gave the thermos cap a quarter turn. Instantly, a white sheet of wind jetted out from the thermos and propelled oh, jetted out of the thermos, excuse me, and propelled us sideways, turning our downward plummet into a 45-degree crash landing. The wind seemed to laugh as it shot from the thermos like it was glad to be free. As we hit the ocean, we bumped once, twice, like a skipping stone, 
Then we were whizzing along like a speedboat, salt spray in our faces, and nothing but sea ahead. I heard a wail of outrage from the ship behind us, but we were already out of weapon range. The Princess Andromeda faded, by, faded to the size of a white toy boat in the distance, and then it was gone. As we raced over the sea, Annabeth and I tried to send an iris message to Chiron. We figured it was important we let somebody know what Luke was doing, and we didn't, didn't know who else to trust. The wind from the thermos stirred up a nice sea spray that made a rainbow in the sunlight, perfect for an iris message, but our connection was still poor. When Annabeth threw a gold drachma into the mist and prayed for the rainbow goddess to show us Chiron, his face appeared all right, but there was some kind of weird strobe light flashing in the background and rock music blaring like he was at a dance club. We told him about sneaking away from camp and Luke and the Princess Andromeda and the golden box for Kronos' remains. But between the noise on his end and the rushing wind and water on our end, I'm not sure how much he heard. Percy! Chiron yelled. You have to watch out for... His voice was drowned out by loud shouting behind him. A bunch of voices whooping like whooping it up like Comanche warriors. What? I yelled. Curse my relatives! Chiron ducked as a plate flew over his head and shattered somewhere out of sight. Annabeth, you shouldn't have let Percy leave camp. But if you do get the fleece. Yeah, baby! Somebody behind Chiron yelled. The music got cranked up, subwoofer so loud it made our boat vibrate. Miami, Chiron was yelling. I'll try to keep watch. Our misty screen smashed apart like someone on the other side had thrown a bottle at it, and Chiron was gone. An hour later, we spotted land, a long stretch of beach lined with high-rise hotels. The water became crowded with fishing boats and tankers. A Coast Guard cruiser passed on our starboard side, then turned like it wanted a second look. I guess it isn't every day they see a yellow lifeboat with no engine going a hundred knots an hour, manned by three kids. That's Virginia Beach, Annabeth said as we approached the shoreline. Oh my gods, how far did the Princess Andromeda travel? Sorry, oh my gods, how did the Princess Andromeda travel so far overnight? That's like... 530 nautical miles, I said. She stared at me. How did you know that? I... I'm not sure. Annabeth thought for a moment. Percy, what's our position? 36 degrees, 44 minutes north, 76 degrees, 2 minutes west, I said immediately. Then I shook my head. Whoa, how did I know that? Because of your dad, Annabeth guessed. When you're at sea, you have perfect bearings. That is so cool. I wasn't sure about that. I didn't want to be a human GPS unit, but before I could say anything, Tyson tapped my shoulder. Other boat is coming. I looked back. The Coast Guard vessel was definitely on our tail now. Its lights were flashing and it was gaining speed. We can't let them catch us, I said. They'll ask too many questions. Keep going into Chesapeake Bay, Annabeth said. I know a place we can hide. I live just... I live like 20 minutes from the Chesapeake Bay. So I'm so, dude, am I the only one that whenever like a location like near me, like whenever a location significant in my life is like mentioned in a book or a TV show or a movie, I'm just like, yeah, that, that, that's my house. That's my house. I didn't ask what she meant or how she knew the area so well. I risked loosening the cat. Blah, blah, blah. I risked, I risked loosening the thermos cap a little more and a fresh burst of wind sent us rocketing around the northern tip of virginia beach into chesapeake bay the coast guard boat fell farther and farther behind we didn't slow down until the shores of the bay narrowed on either side and i realized we'd entered the mouth of a river i could feel the change from salt water to fresh water suddenly i was tired and frazzled like i was coming down off a sugar high I don't, oh, I didn't know where I was anymore, or which way to steer the boat. It was a good thing Annabeth was directing me. Wow, 
I never noticed that before. Percy's navigation is literally only good at sea. Like, once he gets out of the ocean, like, the oceans are salt water, like, specifically salt water. Once he gets out of salt water, that's, like, that, that, like, it cuts his power. Like, like, it cuts out that specific power. Like, he doesn't have his bearings anymore. I never noticed that before. Like, that never, like, clicked in my head. Although, wait. Okay, he did say they'd entered a river, so, yeah. I was about to say, the Chesapeake Bay is technically brackish water, which, for those of y'all that don't know, that's a mix of fresh water and salt water, because... The Atlantic feeds directly into the Chesapeake... Well, the Chesapeake Bay feeds directly into the Atlantic. But salt water from the Atlantic comes up into the Chesapeake Bay. But then fresh water from, like, the Chesapeake Bay's watershed, like the rivers and streams and stuff, that's all fresh water. And it hits the Chesapeake Bay and it mixes and creates brackish water, which is what part... Which is what... It's part of what makes the Chesapeake Bay such, like an important ecosystem like for the United States because it supports a lot of different like sea life and allows for like a lot of different things like the the Chesapeake Bay is such a huge thing that like it I, I don't know how to explain this to non-Marylanders but if you research the Chesapeake Bay the Chesapeake Bay is just, like, it's like a huge resource. It is a huge natural resource for the United States. It's such a huge, thing. for the United States as a whole, but, like, especially, like, the East Coast specifically. And it's, the Chesapeake Bay is, like, Maryland's crutch, essentially. Like, Maryland is nothing without the Chesapeake Bay. Like, it, it is such a crutch and such, like, an important thing. Anyway, I was just like, I was like, am I about to get nitpicky in here? Because I was like, if he's still in the Chesapeake Bay, there's technically salt water there. He shouldn't have taken, like, a power drop-off yet, but they're in a river, like a freshwater river. So, we're cool. We're cool. <clears throat> Where did I leave off? Here we go. It was a good thing Annabeth was directing me. There, she said, past that sandbar. We veered into a swampy area choked with marsh marsh grass. I beached the lifeboat at the foot of a giant cypress. Vine-covered trees loomed above us. Insects churred in the woods. The air was muggy and hot, and steam curled off of the river. Basically, it, was, basically it wasn't Manhattan, and I didn't like it. Accurate description of, of the bay in the summertime. It's, that's pretty spot on. That sounds like Maryland. All right. Come on, Annabeth said. It's just down the bank. What is? I asked. Just follow, she grabbed a duffel bag. And we'd better cover the boat. We don't want to draw attention. After bearing the lifeboat with branches, Tyson and I followed Annabeth along the shore, our feet sinking in red, sinking in red mud. A snake slithered past my shoe and disappeared into the grass. Not a good place, Tyson said. Buddy, you're telling me I don't live here for like freaking 15 years, 14 years. <sighs> he swatted the mosquitoes that were forming a buffet line on his arm. God damn. Bro, Rick did his research on Maryland. This is accurate as shit. All right. After another few minutes, Annabeth said, here. All I saw was a patch of brambles. Then Annabeth moved aside a woven circle of branches like a door, and I realized I was looking into a camouflaged shelter. The inside was big enough for three, even with Tyson being the third. The walls were woven from plant material, like a Native American hut, but they looked pretty waterproof. Stacked in the corner was everything you could want for a campout. Sleeping bags, blankets, an ice chest, and a kerosene lamp. There were demigod provisions, too. Bronze javelin tips, a quiver full of arrows, an extra sword, and a box of ambrosia. The place smelled musty, like it had been vacant for a long time. A half-blood hideout. I looked at Annabeth in awe. You made this place? Talia and I, she said quietly. And Luke. That shouldn't have bothered me. I mean, I knew Talia and Luke had taken care of Annabeth when she was little. 
I knew the three of them had been runaways together, hiding from monsters, surviving on their own before Grover found them and tried to get them to Half-Blood Hill. But whenever Annabeth talked about the time she'd spent with them, I kind of felt... I don't know... Uncomfortable? No. That's not the word. The word was jealous. So, I said, you don't think Luke will look for us here? She shook her head. We made a dozen safe houses like this. I doubt Luke even remembers where they are. Or cares. She threw herself down on the blankets and started going through her duffel bag. Her body language made it pretty clear she didn't want to talk. Um, Tyson, I said, would you mind scouting around outside? Like, looking for a wilderness convenience store or something? Convenience store? Yeah, for snacks. Powdered donuts or something. Just don't go too far. Powdered donuts, Tyson said earnestly. I will look for powdered donuts in the wilderness. He headed outside and started calling. Here, donuts! Once he was gone, I sat down across from Annabeth. Hey, I'm sorry about, you know, seeing Luke. It's not your fault, she unsheathed her knife and started cleaning the blade with a rag. He let us go too easily, I said. I hoped I'd been imagining it, but Annabeth nodded. I was thinking the same thing. What we overheard him say about a gamble, and they'll take the bait. I think he was talking about us. The fleece is the bait? Or Grover? She studied the edge of her knife. I don't know, Percy. Maybe he wants the fleece for himself. Maybe he's hoping we'll do the hard work, and then he can steal it from us. I just can't believe he would poison the tree. What did he mean, I asked, that Talia would have been on his side? He's wrong. You don't sound sure. Annabeth glared at me, and I started to wish I hadn't asked her about this while she was holding a knife. Percy, you know who you remind me of most? Talia. You guys are so much alike, it's scary. I mean, either you would have been best friends, or you would have strangled each other. I mean... Talia hit him with lightning, he hit her with a lake. You know, potato, potato. Re reasonable assessment, I feel like. Definitely, definitely pretty spot on. You know, we love the consistency. <clears throat> Honestly, though, I think it's really cool that, like, Percy, that Annabeth says Percy and Talia are so similar. Because when you think about it, that's kind of how Zeus and Poseidon are. Like, even though they may not get along 100% of the time, while there is, like, that sibling tension there between Zeus and Poseidon, they're very, like, similar to each other. Like, the reason they clash so much is because they're similar people, I feel like. So, like, you know, there's that there. There's that dynamic reflected in, you know... Talia and Percy's relationship. And then when Nico comes along, it's a similar thing. Because Ty... Because, like... So... Uh, blah, 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 blah. Because, like, with Talia and Percy and, like, Zeus and Poseidon, you know, there's contention there. The two of them can kind of butt heads. They're both kind of big and bad doing their thing up on Olympus. Percy and Talia are, you know... You know, big deals with the campers and with, like, the hunters and stuff. But then you have Hades and Nico... Hades kind of just does his own thing and is worried about his own stuff, but when he gets involved with his brothers, he can either be, like, the straw that breaks the camel's back, like, he can make things worse, or he can be the voice of reason and just be like, da 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 and, like, mellow things out, which is kind of similar to what Nico does, in my opinion. Like, I just think it's cool how the relationship between the big three as siblings is kind of represented in their children as cousins, if that makes any sense. Like, I don't know if anybody else feels the same way or, like, is thinking the same way I'm thinking, but I just think that's cool. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat>